Welcome back to part three of the Pixelmator Pro Masterclass. In the previous episodes, I gave you an entire tour of the UI. I walked you through basic color adjustments and even explained the difference between destructive and non-destructive edits. And now today, we're taking our first steps into the left panel and we're exploring layers and all of the things that layers enable you to do. If you'd like to watch the previous episodes or if you'd like the project file so you can follow along with this episode, those are gonna be linked in the description below. And with that, let's jump in and show you what we're working with. Now, if you've downloaded the photo that we're gonna be working from, I'm just gonna go over here and get that opened up. And now, if for whatever reason you're not seeing this layers panel on the left-hand side, you're just gonna click this button right up here to make sure that you've got it open. And now that your UI is in a good state, let me walk you quickly through the base edits I did just to get this photo in a really good state so that we can spend the rest of the time talking about layers. If you have questions about any of these edits, most of it's covered in the previous episodes. So all I did was warmed up the photo a touch. I like the look of a sunset photo, even though this was pretty midday. The other thing that I've noticed is that in drone shots, you tend to have a lot of clarity issues. So I really cranked up the clarity until I started to get good separation from the rocks. And I also started pulling in the texture so that I could start feeling the individual grains on all of those large rocks. And then the last thing, as you can see in our histogram, all of our tones are in the middle. So I just pulled up the contrast a little bit just to separate that out of touch, not a ton. With that, we've got something that's really contrasty. Um, the only thing that I would wanna change is the colors. And this is a tool that you haven't seen yet, but we're going to cover completely in depth in a future episode, and that's selective color. So like I said, you don't need to fully understand how this works, but what we're doing is just grabbing individual colors and moving them around. And so I wanted my greens to be a little bit more blue that makes them a little bit more vibrant. And I'm gonna make them a little darker. And the other thing I'm gonna do is grab my yellows and make them a little bit more green. You can see if I make my yellows orange, it sort of turns into a fall scene. But if I pull them a little bit towards the green, it makes everything just look that much more lush. And I'm also gonna dial back the brightness and maybe a little bit of the contrast as well so it doesn't look too artificial. And that's all we need. That's the basic edit. But you'll notice there are some glaring issues with this photo and it still lacks an element of focus. You see, when I took this photo, I wanted this fin right here in the middle to be the main subject of the photo. And with these basic edits alone, it's really not standing out. And so what I wanna do is get rid of some distracting elements. So for example, this big white rock in the bottom corner of the screen is just a massive distraction, and we can hide some of that. The other issue in this photo is the other corner, which is we have way too much going on with this windy road in the background. I like that it's a detail people can notice, but I don't want it to steal the attention of the main event. So with that said, let me give you a tour of the layers panel and then show you how we can use layers to solve these issues with our photo. So coming over here to the layers panel, we have three buttons here at the top. We have our one existing layer with a couple of controls and some additional information, as well as some controls about the layer that is selected itself. Now, this first button is all about customizing our layers panel. So I can make the image small or large in my thumbnail. I can change the blend mode controls so that they are at the bottom if I would like. And I can hide and show the layer descriptions. I'm going to leave everything to the defaults just so it's easier for people to follow the tutorial, but customize that to your heart's content. Now the next button over you will notice is all sorts of different kinds of layers you have access to. And we're gonna go through each one of these. And then there's the plus, which just creates a new empty layer. You'll notice when I click that, it creates a new layer and it does nothing to my canvas over here. And that's because this is an empty layer. You can see by this checker box pattern, that means it's completely transparent. Now we haven't gone into the brush tool yet, but I wanna quickly show you how if I choose the brush tool and I get myself a brush, I can paint a color here and it appears in my thumbnail and it is separate from this layer, which means I can hide and show it. And I can even make the entire layer more or less transparent with the opacity slider. 
Now the last one that's going to have an entire dedicated video is blending modes. Blending modes change the way that layers stack on top of each other. So if this is new or scary to you, don't worry about it. That's what the full video is for. But for those that are curious, I can change the blend mode and you can see that it actually changes the way these colors mix with each other and sometimes really interesting and useful ways. We're gonna leave it to normal for now. The one other thing that you can do that might not be obvious is you can click and drag on layers to rearrange them. So now in this case, my main layer is on the top. I can hide it and show it, or I can put this right back on top. Now, once you're done with a layer, you just right click on it to delete, or you can just press the delete key. Now for this particular image, we're not going to use that basic layer, but that idea of how the basic layer works is what's going to feed our knowledge of all of the other layers. So let's jump into the next example, which is pretty easy to understand now that we've seen how basic layers work, and that's a text layer. If I come up here, I can add a text layer directly, and you can see that just drops text right in the middle. Or if I press Command Z to undo that, I can come down to the bottom right corner and I can click on my text tool and then click anywhere I want to add text to my image. So in this case, I can edit the text and I can rearrange the text and I can change the opacity of the text, just like any other layer. The difference is text doesn't get pixelated as you scale it up and down. You can grow it arbitrarily. And this is true of shape layers as well. Now, if this is interesting to you, shape and text layers are going to be the subject of their own video entirely. But I wanted to show you really quickly that we have different kinds of layers that inherit similar properties. So you'll notice I can come down here to the shape menu. I can pick a shape that I'm interested in. And just like text, I can drag it out. And if I change the sizing, I don't introduce pixelation like I would with a normal image layer. I can also go through and do things like opacity changes and blend modes. These are things that are common to all layers. So now that you've seen a couple different ways that layers work, let's talk about the layers that are most powerful when it comes to photography. And those are color adjustment layers. You have two ways to get a color adjustment layer. One is to come up here and go to color adjustments and that will introduce a new color adjustment layer. Or if you would like to take color adjustments that you've already made on a layer and turn them into a color adjustments layer, you can come up to the color adjustments tab and you can come up to the try dot menu and convert it to a color adjustments layer. So now that we have this color adjustment layer, let me show you how we can use this to solve our problem. We want this rock to still be there, but just not be a distraction. And the way that we're gonna do that is really pull all of the brightness out of it. So it's not this big glaring white beacon of light in the bottom corner of our image. So if I come up here and I pick, let's say exposure and highlights and shadows and brightness and just really crank this thing all the way down, you can see my color adjustments layer has ruined my entire image. And you can see also that they are non-destructive like we talked about in the previous video, meaning that if I turn this layer off, they go away. And if I dial back the opacity, it lessens the effect. But there's one other thing that we can do to control which parts of an image a layer has impact on. That's if we right click on it, we can add a mask. So what a mask does is it introduces this hidden black and white image. This black and white image controls what comes through and what is hidden. You can see this illustrated by this pseudo hidden layer that appears right here in our layers panel. Now I can hide it if I'd like, but we're going to edit this mask. The other thing you might notice here is that the default mask is completely white, which means the entirety of this layers effect comes through, but we can change that. So for example, if I come over to the brush tool and I change it to black, and notice that I am painting on my mask layer, not the color adjustments or the image layer. Wherever I paint black, the effect doesn't apply. Now I could, if I wanted to, make this a really soft brush. You can see it has this feathered edge all the way around it. That would be one strategy. But there's an easier way, especially for situations like this, and these come up all the time in photography. I just undo these, I can come over 
and grab my gradient tool. Now the gradient tool is hidden under the paint bucket. And you'll see the default gradient goes from black to white. And so again, making sure that I have my mask layer selected, I can click and drag from the middle of the image down to the bottom corner. And I introduce this really dark shadow that covers up this bottom corner of the image. And the really powerful thing with masks is you don't have to be completely committed to one form. So if I have this gradient that I like, but maybe I want to fine tune it just a little bit, I can come in here with my brush and I can turn down the opacity on my brush and I can just delicately paint out some of this effect in areas where I think it's too strong. And the result ends up being something that looks like an overcast day or the shadow of a cliff darkening this bottom area and making it so it's less of a distraction. And maybe for you, when you look at this, you think, oh man, that's a really strong effect. The great thing is that all of the tools you have for layers continue to apply even after you've added a mask. So I can come in here and just dial back the opacity a little bit and make it so it's not quite as strong of an effect. That's pretty cool. I think it's done a lot to reduce this distraction of this big rock in the bottom corner. Now with this rock removed as a distraction, I want to make it so that the focus doesn't drift to this top right corner. So one of the ways that we can do that is we can reduce the contrast in a particular area. So what I'm going to do is create another color adjustments layer, and I'm going to really dial back the clarity. And you'll notice it gives it a hazy look like it's far off in the distance. Now this is optional. Uh, this is something that I think makes it feel realistic or maybe even hyper realistic is you can even add a little bit of blue to it too because as things fade into the distance they get bluer you see this effect with mountains and other things far off in the distance and the really great thing is because the rocks in the middle were warmed up with our initial adjustment you're going to have contrast between that blue background and that warm midground which will make that warm midground stand out even more so now that we have our adjustment that will remove the distraction of that top right corner, we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to right click to add a mask. I'm gonna press G to use the gradient tool and then making sure I have the mask selected, I'm just gonna drag this gradient sort of from the middle and make sure that the line the gradient creates goes diagonally this way across the corner. And you can see the difference that this makes in the image. Now, if I don't like it, I can give this another shot. I can try my gradient one more time, make sure that I'm not getting too much of the rocks in my gradient there. And I think that is an effect that really helps the rocks in the middle of the image stand out in a way that doesn't look too fake. Now, if we would like to push this even a step beyond, we can introduce things called effects layers. Now we briefly touched on the effects panel before, but we can also add effects layers. So what that means is if we would like to, for example, apply a blur, maybe as if our camera was out of focus, we can add this as an effects layer. And then we can decide which parts of the image we want to be in focus or out of focus. So with that Gaussian blur applied, I'm going to add a mask and I'm going to start this time by dumping black all over the mask. That will hide the blur entirely. And then I'm going to use the brush tool set to basically as big as it will go. And I'm going to paint in some white in the areas that I want to be out of focus. Now, no camera in the world has the depth of field to actually make this happen in real life, but if I was doing this for like a YouTube thumbnail, I'm not worried about the realism in this particular image. I'm worried about making it so the main subject of the photo really stands out. And so now that I have something where the foreground and the background really start to separate from the midground in a way that honestly starts to look a little bit like tilt shift photography, I can come back over to the effects panel and I can dial back the Gaussian blur. Maybe that's a little too fake for my taste and I could just make it so the foreground and the background just have a little touch of a blur there to really make these middle rocks pop. And so with that, you should have a good sense of all of the different types of things you can do with a layer. 
you may have noticed that we didn't touch on every single one of these explicitly, and that's because all of these types of layers available in this layers menu are just features we're going to cover in later videos, just separated out into the layers panel. But we'll address all of them individually in a deep dive video. So if you are interested in all of those, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos. In episode four, we're going to be continuing our path down the color adjustments panel, where I'm gonna be showing you all of the tools available to take your photos to the next level. Thanks again for coming along with me on this series, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.